brake fluid is highly corrosive, it can ruin things, okay? So we're gonna move straight into the brake fluid. Maybe you have a hydraulic clutch system. I'm gonna show you guys that as well in a different video. But brake fluid, let's attack it. All right, so mainly Hondas, they use a Phillips head screw to hold the cap seal down. Before you even break that loose, what you need to make sure that you buy is a new master cylinder diaphragm, okay? You wanna replace these every single time that that cap is unsealed. All right, they, they disform as they are sitting in that brake fluid reservoir, okay? So a new cap seal, you may see a square one on your older bike, maybe a circle one for your even older bike, or this oval one for almost every bike past 2000, okay? So I like to get some paper towels ready as well. If you have a nice pretty tank, beautiful skull fiery death all over your tank with a nice paint job, go ahead and grab a towel, okay? and throw it over the tank. Brake fluid is extremely, extremely corrosive and it will wipe the paint like that, okay? Promise me, promise me. I promise you, it will ruin anything that it touches. So what I also like to use is a good old fashioned turkey baster, okay? This is what I use to suck the fluid out of the reservoir. So that way we're not pumping old fluid back in the system and just trying to refill it and clean it out eventually. You can suck it completely out with a turkey baster and then start filling it with brand new fluid. That way when you start bleeding, brand new fluid is introduced to the system, not old fluid. It's got two Phillips head screws. The, one of the biggest problems you'll run into is these get stuck, okay? Again, my tap method, it's not actually mine, it's anybody who's smart enough to use it. Take a hammer, whack the top of your Phillips head screwdriver and it will break that, that thread loose and make sure that you can get it out. If you start to feel like you're getting ready to strip those threads out, just stop where you are and use that hammer technique. You do not want to ruin your master cylinder by trying to drill these out. It is a complete nightmare. So, screws are removed. I'm gonna go ahead and place them right down here. We're gonna pull this cap off. Sometimes it just pops off and throws fluid everywhere. So be really careful when you're taking it off. There's the first cap. You should then have some kind of plastic seal, which is holding down that, red, that rubber reservoir cap. So we're gonna pry this loose very slowly. Okay, there's that. You can go ahead and wash this out with water if you want, get this moisture out of it. So you've got a nice, clean, crisp plastic guard going right back in. Now we're down to getting nasty, all right? We got, a, we got a, a rubber cap seal that has fluid all on top of it, which is very common, okay? It's not weird for this to have fluid in it. So we're gonna kind of break this loose from all the seals so when we pull it out, it's not stuck on any corner and you go to yank it and it throws fluid everywhere, okay? The, the key of doing brake fluid is being very, very cautious of what you're doing. I'm gonna grab a paper towel, okay? And just grab it really close to here. So I'm gonna take this, transfer it straight to the paper towel and into the trash can. Now let's have a look and see what this looks like inside of here. So this is not bad at all, okay? I can actually still see the bottom of my reservoir, which is actually very unlikely on a lot of brake fluid changes, okay? I'm gonna take my turkey baster, suck all this stuff out while using my paper towel, okay? And it's important, again, every time you transfer out, you always want to have something to protect it. So I'm going to use this and suck all around, maybe on the window that, that shows you where the fluid's at, and get any kind of mud or debris that you may see. Transfer it straight to the paper towel and into a container. Right back on the towel again, and then go straight back in. Suck all of this out. Awesome, so now that we've taken all that fluid out, I'm gonna go ahead and use this paper towel again, triple use, and just shove it right down in that master cylinder, okay? We're gonna use this to soak up anything else that's in there. Now, you may have never changed your brake fluid out and inside is just full of caked mud, okay? That's gonna take a little bit more time. In this case, it's cleaner. I actually have another video, is a clutch rebuild on a top master cylinder and it'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So once this is all soaked out, Maybe even use some Q-tips and just kind of scrape all around and get all that stuff out. Q-tips work amazing with these kind of systems. We're gonna go ahead and grab our brake fluid, 
fill this up and I'm going to show you guys my techniques that will change your life when it comes to changing your brake fluid out. All right, so brake fluid is sucked out and dried out of that system. I'm going to go ahead and use this DOT4 brake fluid. Hondas only use DOT4. I'm going to use Pro Honda, of course, DOT4 brake fluid. Um, you can use anything you'd like as long as it's DOT4. I'm not going to upsell Pro Honda fluids to you guys, but it's, I think it's great stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill this right back up with brake fluid. That way, like I said before, we're starting fresh when we go to start bleeding the system out. This is the best technique for this. Now, for my technique, okay, this is important, guys. Needle nose pliers. All right, this takes away from having to have a friend help you out or never actually getting all of the air out of the line. We're going to use these pliers here to make ourselves a one-way valve inside of the hose. That way you can leave the bleeder completely open. Never touch it again until you're ready to close it up and use these for how you force fluid down the line. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so brake bleeder system, okay? This is really simple to use. You can actually take a bottle or an old plastic bottle, fill it partially up maybe with some water or some brake fluid and run a hose straight into it. It's super easy to make. This is the Brake Bleeder 5000. It changes lives, okay? Solves world peace at the same time. So, grab a hose. You're going to go right onto the bleeder valve of your brake system. Sometimes they have two bleeder valves. Very important to know which one is controlling the one that you want to bleed. Sometimes you have a split system. You have a rear brake hose operating the same caliper. Be very mindful. Check your manual and make sure that you're doing the right one at the right time. This is a single hose caliper one-sided caliper on one side of the disc. This uses a eight millimeter wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and crack this loose. We're gonna go right back up top to where we're gonna be bleeding it. So the brake, brake bleeder valve is open, okay? Using your pliers, you're gonna go ahead and grab the line and add some force to it, okay? What this does is make a valve. What, what this helps is that when you start to actuate your brake lever, when that brake fluid comes past here, the tension that you add here will not allow it to come back up. That way when you're actuating your brake lever, the fluid's not going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, never fully getting all of the fluid out of your system. Use these pliers and it will make total sense once you realize how stiff you got your brake lever. So I'm going to use these pliers, add some pressure so it's kind of making some resistance as fluid flows past these pliers. Okay. If you don't feel that, that, that resistance at first, add a little bit more pressure here until you, until you almost have to force the fluid past those pliers, okay? It adds resistance. It makes it so it's a one-way valve, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and bleed this all the way out of the reservoir until it's right close to the, to the relief hole. All right, I'm going to stop there and add one more container full. All I usually like to run about two to three reservoirs through the system. Add that resistance in the, in the hose. Force that fluid past that one-way valve. Sometimes you can even hear the air bubbles passing that one-way valve as you actuate your brake lever. I'm telling you guys, it works amazing, especially for clutch, hydraulic clutch systems. You do the same exact thing. You may even notice that when you add this one-way valve and you slightly press on your brake lever, you notice air bubbles coming up. That's exactly what you want, okay? You're forcing that air that's stuck in the cylinder to bleed itself up. Once you are done, what I do is hold this brake lever closed like this and then tighten the bleeder valve on the caliper. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's it. Feel your brake lever and make sure that it is nice and stiff. Okay. If you're using a third or all the way to the brake lever before you start to actuate the actual brakes, keep bleeding it out. Use that technique. Use it better. Okay. And it is a surefire way to get any air out of your system, I can guarantee it. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and top this back off with fluid, put that cap on, put the plastic cap on, make sure it's nice and clean, and button her up. One other thing that I wanna tell you guys is to make sure that this reservoir is in the most horizontal plane possible, okay? Even if you have to break these loose to rock this down, you wanna make sure that this is perfectly level with the ground that you're standing on, all right, unless you're on, on a hill. But you want this flat, okay, because if you, like on some cases, the reservoirs are tilted way to the left or way to the right. And so what I do is I put the handlebars in the best possible position for this to be flat and then move accordingly to that. Because if you just take that cap off, fluid's gonna come rushing out of your system and you do not want that. So let's fill this up. Um, in, the, in the master cylinder itself, you may see a line that runs right around the whole inside of that reservoir, fill it up to that line. It's almost like it's a cast mark from when they made the, the reservoir itself. That's the safest bet. Then what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a paper towel and just run it right along the outside ring to make sure that that's nice and dry. Okay, then we'll take our new rubber diaphragm. Remember, these are one-time use. Replace them every time. If you do not, um, it's your fault that you get brake fluid all over your tank. Remember that I've warned you if you, use this if you don't use this reservoir cap, you can ruin things very, very easily. So now that this plastic thing is all, plastic thing. So now that this plastic cap seal is all clean, I'm going to put that on there. Add our final cap and put our screws in. I tighten one side down till it's snug, do the other side, and snug that one in a little bit more and go right back to the opposite side. That is a perfectly working brake system, okay? Like I said, you can do the same thing with your rear brakes. It's just you're, you're, you're going to use a pedal instead of a brake lever. Same on the clutch side. Hydraulic system, use the pliers as a one-way valve. It will save you time. It will save you aggravation. I can guarantee it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This is Cody from Motorcycle MD giving you guys quality tips on your brake job. Check out my other videos while you're here. I can't wait to hear from you guys. If you have any questions at all, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch these videos. I produce this content solely for you. If you are the guy who likes to work on your own bike, I got tons of other videos to help detail and fine tune the repair that you need to do, okay? Like, share, subscribe. Maybe you know someone who may use this video. He needs it too, man. Share it to him. Let him know what's going on with MotorcycleMD.com where you can also subscribe to the mailing list and get the first view of new content that comes out you will not want to miss it. Can't wait to see you guys next time. Later.